Good evening everyone, this is Kai Rimno here for another video. Um, I've decided to, um, before I get into the more newer stuff I want to do, and get into like my, uh, like fully get into my uh, horror costume um, updates and all that, which it's been slow. I mean, it takes time and plus, you know, um, but I have, uh, decided to go back and remake uh, some of uh, my videos that I can with the unboxings that's why they're called unboxings <laughs> you have only you have only one chance of doing it right I don't fake it with uh, you guys I don't I don't open up uh, the box take out the item and then put it back the way it was I'm not like that I've seen people do that, and that's faking it. I don't fake things. Um, so, the first video that I've been thinking about re remaking ever since I actually listened to it was my old Jewish Priest, the complete album collection um, review that I did back in 2012, I think. But since I feel like I've gotten better at this, I think I can give you guys a little bit better um, review. Uh, all right, let's get started with this. Um, this is the Jewish Priest, the complete album collection. I got this. Actually, I actually got it like around the time that I got released. What attracted me to this set, what made me want it very badly, was the first time that we got the first two Jewish Priest C um, albums on CD. I mean, officially by Jewish Priest. Um, all the, um, all the, um, all the other remastered versions before this set, um, were done by their old, uh, record company to get some money from Priest's popularity um, which they've even said not to buy any of their albums which people have because they're, they're just Priest friends they're, they want to complete everything but this is why I'm glad I got into music around the CD times so, I, so I'm able to own all of them officially um, obviously by what most of you know this is not truly the complete version this is not the complete album collection um because back into back in 2012 um this is when uh they were wanting to uh they're um they were wanting to go out on tour um this was released around the time of their final tour so-called final tour until they went back and said uh no it's not our final tour uh, we're just uh, not we we'll be doing big uh, world um, world tour um, world tours, and we're just gonna focus on recording all that, and then and then they just finally took in that away completely. So around this time, um, this is probably re this is probably released to coincide of that tour, even though that the tour started back in 2011, I believe. Um. This is not the complete album collection. I like uh, to call it the the classic albums um, collection um, because the Rob Halford fronted version of the band is the more popular version of the two because Rob was there mostly for almost all their um, almost all of their career. Um, as you may know, after uh, the Painkiller tour. Priest um, Rob left to do his own thing, which was a uh, fight. Um, I think what really affected him was that whole court thing to where these two kids, well, there might be one, I think it was two, like they were listening to a, um, Better By You, Better Than Me, which is a Spooky Tooth cover that Priest did on the uh, Stained Class album. And they uh, killed... Um, themselves over it and if you see those videos on them of them tour 
they don't look they look like no offense guys but they look like crap I mean I mean when like when like you get called into court and and was told like yeah these two kids got killed by your song or 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 a song or a song that you did on one of your albums um so during that time the PMRC was still a large thing so which anyways um let's get on to the albums that this set contains it contains Rockerola and Sad Wings of Destiny the first time on CD uh Sin After Sin uh Stained Glass Class uh, Killer Machine or known as Hell Bent for Leather in the US which I which I prefer the UK name Unleashed in the East one of my favorite live albums of all time British Steel Point of Entry the classic uh S Grimming for Vengeance the Defenders of the Faith, Turbo, Priest Alive, Rammer Down, Painkiller. That's probably my favorite Priest album. Um, Angel of uh, Retribution, No Chadamus, and A Touch of Evil Live. All right, let's get on to the uh, the box that it, that it contains in. It actually looks like metal. It looks like steel. Um, the classic priest logo that they used for the new age of priest. Think they started using this? Um, no, they started using this back. They they uh you they use this logo for when Rob came back in the band, and it has the complete albums collection and it has the uh, the trident, which is the priest's logo, that was first seen on the Sad Wings of Destiny Angel. The back just tells you what it comes with, and to open up is pretty simple you just look this up and there we go um it comes with a nice uh little um little booklet it, it, it tells you all the uh songs and starting from uh let me check starting from um, the Defenders of the Faith, it actually tells you which, um, which, uh, which, uh, guitar player plays what in the songs, um, solo-wise. So, like, for, like, for instance, they'll say, like, Glenn plays, uh, the first solo, then K.A.K. does, like, the fills or whatever. And it, and it even has some pictures, and one of my personal favorite of theirs, um, Let me find it real quick. It's probably this one right here because it uh, shows them looking all badass. And I really do like uh, the Seventies Priest albums, and of course, another one of my favorite shots is Priest at the US Festival. So, very nice booklet. Um, unfortunately, again, it doesn't mention uh, the Ripper Owens era, which I think they should have included him. They should have included his stuff that he did for Priest with the set, but I can understand why they didn't. So, which it's funny that with uh, British Steel, they didn't include the uh, the like the DVD from the 20th anniversary edition, or no wait, it was the 30th anniversary edition. And I finally feel like as soon as I got this set, it's like, oh wait, they're gonna re, they're gonna re-release us, screaming for Avengers. And I'm going like, I know how the Led Zeppelin fans feel now. <coughs> <coughs> and so here's a uh, Rockerola. You know, I can never get used to seeing Rob Halford with long hair. What I really like, what I really like about this is that they it's like mini vinyls. So that's another thing too. And like uh, when you get to the uh, double 
um, CDs with two. It's actually a double vinyl. Um, these are a pain in the ass uh, to get the CDs out. A few of them scratch. What I do is I just take it. I do that. I push the sides open and then I just slip it in. And then it's easy access. Um, the songs were on um, Rockalola. Well, the band members during this time is Kick It Downing, uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn Tipton, Rob Halford, John Hinch, and Ian Hill. Um, this album was mostly written by Rob's first, the first pre singer, which was Al Atkins. And the songs come, and the songs um, was uh, one uh, one for the road, uh, rock and roll, um, and then this medley that contains winter deep freeze, winter retreat cheater, which is which is a full nine nine minute and forty seconds. Uh, never satisfied, which a priest started playing again for their uh, epitaph, um, epitaph tour or something like that. Uh, Run of the Mill, Dying to Meet You, and Carvo and Mephs. This album is good, I gotta admit, um, I mean, it doesn't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, British Steel or, or whatever. There's some moments with, like, the priests we know love, but this is more like, I've called this album the only time you hear Priest play brews and psychedelic rock. So... Now, Sad Wings of Destiny, which if you look closely on the angel, you can see the cross, the trident on it. Um, the band members here is just the original four, then the drummer is Alan Moore. Again, it's in a mini vinyl. Um, this is also, no wait, that's a different album. Okay, never mind, I'll save that for it. It is a prelude, tyrant, genocide, epitaph. Island of uh, Domination, Victim of Changes, which is in my top 10 favorite priest songs of all time. Ripper, which is also in my top 10 favorite priest songs of all time. Dream, Deceiver, and Deceiver. And as it turns out, they are the only band that has kept their management throughout their whole career. <laughs> kind of funny if you think about it, which it was it was Bill Corribisley and and Jane Andrews, kind of funny. So, I'm gonna get these, so I'm gonna stack, stack them up like I did when I was listening to them. I always put them upside down, so it'll be easy. The first album that that, that they did with uh, Columbia, uh, this also has, uh, hang on a second, uh, um, Roger uh, Glover producing. And where does that name sound familiar? Oh, yeah, he was in Deep Purple. So again, there's that link between Jewish Priest, Deep Purple, and Black Sabbath again. So this song, this is I really do love this album cover. It's gothic looking and this is actually the last time that we saw the uh Gothic Priest logo and the main reason why Rock um Rockarola and Said Wings of Destiny was was never was ever released when they left to go with uh, Columbia they had no choice but to give up their rights to uh, the master tapes the demos ETC um, they could still play the songs live but that's that's the only time people heard them um, a lot of people never even heard Rock and Roll uh, Sad Wings of Destiny is actually the more well known one so the only way you the only way you would know about Rock and Roller was when if uh if you started out at the very beginning of Priest during like seventy five. So the songs are Sinner, Diamond or Rust, which they did a take for the Sad Wings of Destiny albums. The only re the only reason why I would buy those other versions of uh, Sad Wings of Destiny is because of the Sad Wings of Destiny take on Diamonds and Rust, but I think this version is uh, superior. Um, superior. Uh, Starbreaker, um, Starbreaker, Last Road of Summer, Last Praise has called for the priest for all deal. Here comes the tears and 
Dissident Aggressor and Bone Tracks. Race with uh, the Devil and Jaw Breaker Life. I really do love uh, Dissident Aggressor. It's not in my top 10 for pre songs. It could be. I'm not sure. It's a great song on here. Um, this song is very progressive. Um, is a, this is probably probably my least favorite record out of the 70s pre stuff because there's some moments that's very tame. But this is more per this is more progressive rock than anything. So it's a good album though. The first time we see the classic priest logo that they used until Angel Ashry. This this version of the of the logo is actually used until Um, screaming for vengeance. Um. All right, this um, like I I've always loved, Ju I've always loved Ju um, Judas Priest's album covers. They look so badass. This album is actually the start that you can hear. This is the first album with uh, Les Binks, um, which is my favorite Priest drummer as well. There's some good moments on here. I think it's one of these songs on here, or it might be the next one. There's this one song that you can hear him doing the 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 double bass. So, all right. Um, the album is Exciter, White Heat, Red Hot, Better by You, Better Than Me, Sting Class, Invader, Saints in Hell, Savage, Beyond. The Realms of Death, Heroes and Bone Tracks, Fire, Fire Burns Below, and Better and Better by You, Better Than Me Live. This album became very infamous because of that whole trial with uh, Better by You, Better Than Me during the 90s with Priest. Right before Painkiller got released, actually Painkiller was actually done. They they couldn't really, they wanted to wait until the trials. I mean, they look exhausting in that, in that in that video when you watch it. You feel sorry for Priest too because it's like America accepted them, and now it's like they're trying to, you know. But then again, that's a common kind of thing back during the 80s and like uh, the early 90s with like metal and hard rock is that certain bands got targeted for their themes. So, no, not to mention a lot of suicides. But I don't blame the bands. I have to blame the people that done. I'm sorry. If you're stupid enough to listen to a song by Ozzy Osbourne called Suicide Solution, which is about Bon Scott and about dying and about drinking yourself to death, then hey, you uh, must have been not right in the head. And plus, if you did drugs, that really, you know, Killing Machine, Drew's Priest. This is the first album that we see him go more of a mainstream route, which I'm okay with. Again, same lineup from Sunglass, um, Les Beings. This is the Life's, this is the West Studio album that had him on here. Um, the the songs contain "Delivering the Goods," "Rock Forever," "Rock Forever," "Even Star," "Hellbent for Leather," "Take on the World," "Burning Up." The green, the green Manolishi with uh, the two prong crown, Kill Machine, Running Wild, Before the Dawn, Evil Fantasy, Bonus, bonus Tracks, Fight for Your Lives, Riding on, Riding on the Wind, Wind Live. Now, this album is good. Again, out of, again, out of the seventy priest stuff, my favorite overall is the next is uh, the first live album that that, that they did. Well, this album's pretty damn good. I really do like it. I really do like it. It has some good stuff on it. And I gotta be honest, I hate it when I see a guitar player didn't restring their string, didn't restring their guitar right, so there's like a a piece of string sticking out. That bugs the hell out of me because it's like, ugh. Jewish Priest Unleashed in the East. Hell of a live album. Also known as Unleashed in uh, the studio because a lot of people thought that this was um, overdubbed in the studio. 
Um, the instruments stuff wasn't, but Rob's vocal was recorded in the studio. And you see the classic priest uniform, the leather, and Rob Hofford's motorcycle and badass. And this the songs contain Exciter, Running Wild, Sinner, The Ripper, The Green, Monolishi, Diamonds of Rust, Phantom of Changes, Genocide, Tyrant, Bonus Tracks, Rock Forever, Delivering the Good, Hellbent for Leather Starbreaker. Good live album, I recommend it. Big time. If you want to get a, a little bit of a... If you want to introduce someone to Priest, I recommend this album. Time for another classic Priest album. British Steel. I've owned the uh, 30th anniversary one. I need uh, to rebuy it for uh, the DVD reasons. This is the first album with uh, Dave Holland on drums. They asked Lee, to, um, Les or Lee or something like that to uh, change uh, their his drumming style to more of a basic. He said no, so goodbye. That was a wrong decision to do. I can understand why they did that, but I guess it worked out in the end. Um, the song contains Rapid Fire, which is my favorite piece song, which is my favorite song on this album. Metal Gods, Breaking the Law, Grinder, You United, You Don't Have to Be Old to Be Wise, Living After Midnight, The Rage, and Steeler is a last song. Bonus tracks, Red, Ryan and Blue, Grinder Live. What's more to say about this album? It's a classic. It's a classic. Jewish Priest, Point of Entry, a good album in its own right. Um, it doesn't stand up to British Steel at all, in my opinion, but it's still good. This is actually the last time we see this font of the Jewish Priest logo with, like, the red. Alright, um, it's uh, the same lineup introducing uh, British Steel. Um, comes with heading out to the highway, don't go, hot rocking, turning circles, desert plains, solar angels, you say yes, all the way, troubleshooter, on the run, bonus tracks, thunder road, and desert plains live. Recommend this album. Um, again, it's, it's, I feel like Priest was going back to their 70s roots with, with this album. It's very heavy, it's very raw sounding. But again, it doesn't stand up to Bristol in my opinion. But it's still damn good. Drew's Priest screaming for vengeance. If you notice, they did another um, logo change. And on the U.S. version of this, they did a, uh, a pop-out version of the uh, logo, much like this. But it was red, I believe. It's uh, the same font, but it's pop out to look more 3D. Again, I love this album cover. One of my favorites with the eagle. Um, this is the Hellion. So, again, the songs on here is uh, the Hellion, Electric Eye, Riding on the Wind, Blundstone, Take These Chains, Pain and Pleasure. Um, one of my favorite songs is uh, Screaming for Vengeance. They're very overplayed. Yet at the same time, very awesome. You've got another, you've got another thing coming. Fever, Devil Child, Bone Songs, Prisoner of Your of Your Eyes, Dead or Child Alive. <sighs> A classic priest album again, fantastic. One more to say about them. It's a classic. It's a classic album, much like Bruce Steel is. And people and male fans must own the album in their collection. Defenders of the Faith, which uh, they're doing a uh, special edition re reissue this year. I'm definitely going to be picking that up. It's, like I said, it's uh, the same lineup for, the same lineup for since Fristio will be using Tell Painkiller, so. The songs contain, again, I love this album cover. This is probably, this is badass. Uh, Free Will Burning, Jawbreaker, Rock Hard, Ride Free, 
The Sentinel love bites eat me alive. Some heads are gonna roll. Night comes down. Heavy duty. The defenders of the fate bonus checks. Turn, uh, turn on your on your light. Heavy duty says the defenders of the faith. Good album. Um, do I feel like this album stands up against the screaming for Avengers? I guess that's a debate. I mean, this album is good. It's very heavy. And so is uh, Screaming for Vengeance. So I guess I think I do prefer this one a slight edge over. But it's not my, but this is not my favorite Priest album. We're getting to it. And now we come to the Linkus Link Turbo. This is when Priest wanted to experiment with us. Uh, synthesizer guitars, which to a lot of people didn't work out. Um, metal fans are very hard to please. They want bands to not change their sound. Um, I listened to this. My opinion on it has changed slightly. I do think it's it's a okay album. It's not the greatest album. It, I mean, it definitely doesn't stack up against any other Priest album. Um, it comes with Turbo Lover, Locked In, Private Property, um, per our rental guidance, Rock You All Around of the world, uh, world Out in the Cold, Wild Nights, Hot and Crazy Days, Hot for Love, Reckless, Bone Strikes, All Fired Up and Locked In. Would I recommend this? I would only recommend this if you like the whole synthesizers, guitars, and then I'm not a big fan of them. Um, but... It's still, but it's still Judas Priest. So hey, so listen to it, and um, again, I'll just I'll, I'll say that for the end of the video. The second live album by Priest, and I love this insert right here. The Metal Gods and their and all their glory. Now this one is definitely a bitch. To get the CDs out. Because what I have to do. Is I have to open this up. Do this. And then slide it out. Um, the songs that comes out. Uh, it's the same lineup again. Um, the, uh, um, the songs are. Out in the cold. Heading out to the highway. Metal gods breaking the wall. Light bites. Some heads are going to roll. The sentinel private property. Rock you all around the world. World electric eye. Turbo, um, Turbo Lover, Pre, um, Free World Burning, Parental Guidance, Living After Midnight, You've Got Another Thing Coming, Bonus Tracks, Screaming for Vengeance, Rock Hard Ride Free, Hellbent for Leather. This doesn't stack up to, to Unleashed in the East, Unleashed in the East at all, in my opinion. Um, it does have some good moments, though. It does have some good moments. There's some songs I do like listening to on like an normal basis, like Breaking the Law, uh, Heading Out to the Midnight, um, You've Got Another Coming. It is good, but it is definitely not as good as uh, Unleashing the East, in my opinion. Ram it down. Now, another album chains. They went back. Notice another uh, logo change right here. This is Ram It Down. It comes with, like I said, same lineup since Bridge Steel. Uh, comes Ram It Down, Heavy Metal, Love Zone. Come get it. Hard as I, hard as I am. Blood Red Skies. I'm a rocker. Johnny Be Good. Love You To Death. Monsters of Rock. Bone Tracks. Night comes down live and Bloodstones live. I love this album cover big time. It's like a fish coming down. It has that no god feel to it. Now, would I recommend this album? I would recommend this album. I would, I would recommend all these songs except Johnny Be Good. I have to agree with people. It's not a good cover. Um, it doesn't feel like the original. I get that. In some cases, you have to make um, the song your own, but you can't s strive away from the original concept. With uh, Guns N' Roses, when uh, they did uh, Knock It On Him's Door and 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 live and live and live and live and let die. They they didn't strive too far away with uh, knocking on heaven's door. They added more to it. Slash played the chords that Bob Dylan did. Well, the notes, but he changed it. 
instead of just up and down stroking, he just did alternate picking. Judas Priest, Painkiller. Kick ass album. My my favorite logo on my album cover art. And my favorite priest album. This is the heaviest, fastest priest album that you get. Um a lot of people were dissing on were uh, were uh, dissing a lot of the seventies bands like Black Sabbath and Judas Priest and said like they couldn't keep up with from the likes of Metallica and Pantera and Slayer and Anthrax and Megadeth and they and and they released this album and they just said yeah we can keep up with them the songs on here are are Painkiller, Hell Patrol, All Guns Brazing, Leather Rebel, Metal Meltdown, Nightcrawler, Betraying the Hammer and the Anvil, A Touch of Evil, Battleheim, One Shot at Glory, Bone Shacks, Living Bad Dreams, and Leather Rebel Live. Recommend this album. It's very kick ass. Um, I think it definitely competes with uh, the classic Priest albums like Bruce Steel and uh, Screaming for Vengeance, Big Time. I think it's actually better. Uh, Glenn Tipton and uh, Kick It Downing and and um, Rob Hoffer shines and there and there is a lineup change. Uh, Dave Holland is not part of the band anymore. He's not drumming. They need the boss Scott Travis, which is again a technical drummer, which they needed for this album. If uh, they were wanting to complete, if uh, they were wanting to compete with the uh, thrash metal and speed metal and death metal bands. Um, so obviously they brought back the um, Les Binks era songs a little bit. They brought those songs back. So made a lot of people happy, I'm guessing. So after that, after this album, Rob Hopper left. Tim Ripper Owens came in for with uh, they he did about four. He did two studio album, albums and two live albums with him, which was Juggalator. Uh, I forgot what the live album was. Live Meltdown or something like that. Um, Domination or something like that. Um, and uh, Priest Live in London. I don't have those albums. I want to own them. This is a, another flaw with the set. Actually, it's probably the main flaw. It's probably is that they don't have uh, the Ripper on era stuff in here, which I understand why. But this is the album that Robert came back, and it, and I I actually like it. Um, when I first heard it, I thought it was boring. I thought it didn't compete compete with the other albums. And the songs on here is a uh, Jews Rising. Deal with uh, the devil, devil, which is one of my favorite pre-songs on this record. Revolution's good. Uh, we're fighting for, for, we're fighting for good. Um, Demonizer's good. Wheel of Fire's good. Angel Hellrider's good. Um, Hell, um, Hellergy is good, and Locked is good. Was I, lo I forgot the songs, but they actually make references to like the other um, priests songs and different like priest albums uh I, I forgot what the, myths and believe it or not they they said that these two guys are the same guys and the set wing of destiny is the same as these guys so again there's that continuity there which is weird um the next album is another change it was a it was a idea for them. Some people say it worked. Some people say it didn't. Didn't. Another uh, logo change. Jewish priest not not um Nostradamus, which is concert record. Um, Dawn of Creation, Prophecy, Awaken, um, Revelation, The Four Horsemen, War, Sinner's Time, um, Pestilence and Plague, Death, Peace, Conquest. Uh, Lost Love, um, Per or something like that, Solitude, Exiled, Alone, Shadow in the Flame, Visions, Hope, New new Beginning, Calm, calm Before the Storm, Nashadamus, Future Mankind, 
it's a good album. I listened to it a second time. Again, this is not an album. Much like Turbo, you have to, it's pretty much one of those albums where you like it or you don't. I'm on the side that likes it with Turbo. I'm in the middle of it, but I'm more leaning closer to not liking it. For s probably similar reasons that people like. The last album I'm going to say is a live album. Another another live album that does not complete with the Unleashed in the East. But it does have its moments again. Um, um, Juice Rising, Hell, um, Hell Rider, Betraying the Hammer and the Anvil, ride, um, Riding on the Wind, Death Beyond uh, the, the Realms of Death, um, Dis, Dissonant Aggressor, a, a Touch of Evil, Eat Me Alive, Pop Scene Painkiller. So that's it. That's what the album contains. That's my thoughts on all, all the albums. Um, I feel like I've gotten better. Um, I'll probably do a separate review of these albums when I listen to them on my own time. When I'm not listening to them back to back. Would I, how what on the car radar would I give? I would give it a five out a four out of five. Because it's a good set. Um, if you already have uh, most of these piece albums, the it's only worth it for the first two. Um, for people like me that's been wanting to buy the Priest records but but never could find them, it's a good way of uh, of getting most of them. Um, I hope uh, if you all enjoy this. Uh, Name your, if you guys want, name your uh, top five uh, favorite Priest albums. Um, and also to name, uh, and also to name your uh, favorite drummer from Priest. My favorite is Jeffrey Les Binks, tied with Scott Travis and Dave Holland's number two. Um, anyways, this is Kyle Rimdo here. And I'll see you all later. And my next video will probably be... I've been wanting to redo my Naruto chapter 699 and 700. But this time I'm going to do a few things differently. I've been thinking about doing it to where I actually read it live. And then I tell you all my opinions. Uh, my opinion about it has changed greatly. But there's some things I, that still irks me about it. But anyways, this is Kyle Rimdo here. Good night. Peace out. And we'll end. By the way, Jewish Priest is probably in my top 10 favorite Priest albums. Anyways, I don't want to make this 40 minutes. This has been a long video. I hope uh, no one bitches about me. I've, uh, I've always been about detail. And I try my best at it. So, if I'm not good, then this is going to be the last time I re remake this.